to five tips for incorporating dream dress sessions. This video is really to see if you would like to incorporate dream dress sessions into your regular studio flow. I'm going to give you five tips that will help you get started in this awesome, fun, and rewarding genre of photography. If you end up loving it, you can totally offer this to your regular clients, bring new clients in, and have a blast doing it. Let's get started. First tip, clients. Clients, like what? I have clients, I'm a photographer, I have clients, right? Well, true. However, your current clients or future clients don't even know that you offer these sessions right now. So we have to let them know, right? Your current clients obviously value your work because they come to you. Future clients, they don't really know anything about you. They don't know about these sessions. They don't even know what a dream dress is. So in order for that to be valued by future clients and regular clients, honestly, you need to show them the value. You need to show them how amazing these sessions are. You need to show them how great these girls feel when they put these dresses on, how pretty they feel when moms put them on, and how much fun they're going to have when they basically dress up in a dress that is way nicer than even a Disney princess dress. So let's talk about samples. So we've all been where we find a backdrop or a set and we think, oh my gosh, our clients are gonna love this. And we throw a photo up on Facebook of the set or the backdrop and it's crickets, right? Right, right? Not everyone has your vision. That's why not everyone is a photographer. So what we have to do with these dream dress session is we have to go ahead and rent the dress, buy the dress, whatever, get the dress, find a model slash client, photograph them in this amazing dress, let them share it with their friends, you share it with your clients, and then they come in and do it, and then it just gets that ball going. So honestly, model sessions are an entire guide slash video to themselves. But I'm gonna give you a couple of tips right now so that you can actually get these sessions going quickly, get the information out, show everyone what you have available and get going with it. What you want as a photographer is a client of yours that is actually good at modeling and that you've worked with and you guys have a relationship, mom trusts you, dad trusts you, they love sharing your work online, they like bragging to their friends, those are the people that you want to invite to come into the studio for a model session with these amazing dream dresses. During the model session, something that's super important is you want to tell mom or dad, because I do have dads bring their daughters in, okay? So you want to tell mom or dad, hey, you're welcome to take all the photos, all the videos that you want behind the scenes. So while you're doing your thing, they are taking pictures of you taking pictures of their daughter with their iPhone. So you want to maybe say, hey, can you maybe get me in some of the shots? That would be amazing. So you want her posting behind the scenes, oh my gosh, look at this amazing dress, she's the best. And then you want to post it on your social media, oh my gosh, look at this, this is great, check it out. Another thing that you can do is TikToks. Now, if you don't want the TikTok app because of certain privacy reasons, I get it, but you can also do these sort of videos in Instagram and Reels. Watch a quick YouTube video, super easy. The kids love it, like love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. You will be the coolest thing ever. They will tell all their friends at school. And here's a couple of TikToks we've done. So the whole point, the moral of the story is, with this tip, that you want to create a buzz. So you want to figure out a client that you know, that you work with well, mom is awesome, behind the scenes, she is good on social media. You want to invite them to come in and say, or message them and say, hey, okay, listen, I wanted to kind of like start doing these dress sessions, 
but I don't know, I kind of want to gauge interest. Would you be interested in bringing so-and-so in uh, to model these dresses for me? And, you know, I will either give you free photos, photos at an X price, and a session fee or not a session fee. That is up to you and what you need to do for your studio. So, now that we've talked about clients, okay, that's great, but what about these dresses, April? Hello? That brings me to tip two. Let's talk about dresses. So what the heck is even a dream dress? Like, what? I kind of made this phrase up, like a lot of people call them like couture or whatever, or princess dresses, whatever. I just kind of like wanted to call these sessions something that would be like amazing, would sound amazing to the kids, right? So that's when I came up with dream dress sessions. Hey, little backstory, sorry my audio messed up before. Anyway, little backstory on me. So, super busy. I'm super busy, super busy, super busy. My swim, my son is a year-round swimmer. And that requires a lot of time. It's basically a part-time job slash full-time job. So, I wanted to, I saw a beautiful gown and I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if I could do that part-time, still shooting something, while I'm going back and forth to swim. So what I did was went online, Bitly and Lace, rented a few dresses and was like, you know what? So-and-so, would you like to come shoot? I've known her for years. I photographed her as a newborn and I was like, you know what? Come shoot these dresses. I wanna see if I like it. I wanna see how the girls like it. I just wanna kind of gauge response on it. Well, it kind of exploded <laughs> and in a good way in a good way um let's just say i could probably do dress sessions full time five days a week shoot every single day and there would still be interest in them and girls still come back over and over and over they love them so much so that's the way i did it and that's what i'm trying to show you that model because it works so easily for me so there are lots of dress companies out there how do you choose one the way I chose is I joined the groups and I started renting from the person that I kind of got a good vibe from. And I looked at her gowns, the quality was amazing. I'm like, if I'm gonna do this, I am going to get amazing quality dresses from somebody that I really love and I enjoy working with and I enjoyed everyone that was in the group. I looked through her gowns, they were incredibly beautiful, size range was big, you know, um, that's the thing with rental dresses, you want to make sure that one dress is going to fit multiple ages of girls because then you're going to get more value out of your rental. So that's why I went with her, loved her style, loved her vibe, loved it, match made in heaven, right? What if you don't want to rent a dress, okay? So let's talk about that for a second. So let's talk about rent versus buy. Um, some people like to purchase dresses. I know other photographers that own tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of dresses. That's great, if you have the store, these dresses are enormous. I'm going to get one and show you, hold on just a second. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, I am on an 8 by 20 backdrop, I think. Yep, I'm on an 8 by 20 sweep. And this is how big this dress is. This is, now, this is a teen size. It would fit anywhere from probably a 10-year-old to probably a slender, petite 14-year-old. So this kind of tells you how big these dresses are. So for you to purchase them, you would definitely need the storage space to store all of these dresses. So if you're tight on studio space, buying dresses is probably not for you. Rent would definitely be, be your better option. Rentals are also less cost because it, uh, some dresses can run from anywhere to $600 to $800 a piece if you were to purchase it outright. But then a rental could be anywhere from $79 for a smaller size, all the way up to $150 to maybe $200, depending on you know how big, what size it is, you know the quality of the fabric, the embellishments, and so on. Also, with renting, what I like the most—sorry, I keep hitting my mic. Mic is there. 
what I like most about rentals is the exclusivity of the rental. So what, what I mean by that is if I, let's say I rent this gown, okay, I'm only going to allow maximum four girls to wear this dress and it's going back, okay, maybe five. And that way, not everyone's daughter is photographed in this dress. I live in a small town and the girls want unique dresses. They want to be able to say, oh, well, I wore this dress. What dress did you wear? And so when you rent them, you have a bigger, let's say, carousel of dresses coming and going. And so your clients get exclusive. And let me tell you, clients like exclusive. Another plus with rentals is the ability to, since they're a little bit less expensive, you can also order sets. So you can order Mommy and Me, you can order sibling sets. I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second. So when I say sister set, this is what I mean by a sister set. Technically the pink that I just had would, would could go with these if you had a third bigger sister, like a little teen sister. But this would be a sister set. So if you were to purchase the sister set, it would be a lot. And I mean, you could resell it, which I'm gonna talk about here in just a second, but this, I have it in, I photographed some sets of sisters, and it goes back on to the next one. One negative I would say with rentals would be your shipping costs, and that's just part of it. You have to figure that out and how much you charge your client so that you aren't the one stuck with shipping charges, which is totally fair. They're literally bringing their daughter in with hair and makeup, or slight, slight makeup, they're literally bringing their daughter in and you're providing the rest. So for most parents, that's worth a lot. There's a lot of value in that. One thing that I will say to uh, about dress rentals is respect the dress, okay, you guys? Like, think about how our photography is like our baby and we're so proud of it and we love it and we cherish it. We don't want anyone to, you know, be mean about it or whatever. These designers put their heart, their lives, and their soul into these dresses. So when you have girls come in, you really need to educate them about respecting the dress. They need to know how to walk in it. They need to know not to eat in it, things like that. They need to be careful with it. These are not cheap dresses, and you do not want to be stuck with a repair fee, trust me. But other than that, rentals is the best thing ever. I love it, I love it, I love it. Like I get like, different dresses all the time. I photograph them. I get sick of a dress. So it's fun for me. It's fun for the girls. Parents love it and it's a win-win situation. So let's talk about owning these dresses for a second. So some people like to own them. And like I said, you need the room in your studio to house these dresses. They're huge. They take up a ton of space. You get to have the dresses longer. So you're not on a time limit. You don't have to ship them back. You don't have to worry about uh, messing them up. Now, of course, you don't want to mess your $800 dress up, but you don't have to stress about it as much as if you have to return it. Another thing that you have to consider if you want to purchase your dresses is you have to have the money up front. So you have to have that money to invest in purchasing all these gowns. You can do custom gowns, which is super cool. So basically you can just have the designer make the dress however you want, whatever you have in your mind. The other thing is, is that you can resell these dresses. So there's um, buy, sell trade groups on Facebook where you can post your dress and sell it for about close to what you paid for it because there's a lot of people looking for these dresses. Do I own the, I own a few dresses. I own more simple dresses that the girls, once they get the big poofy dress out of the way, then sometimes they're kind of in the mood for something a little bit simple, a little bit more lightweight. Some of these dresses can weigh upwards of 15 pounds. So that's a lot on a little girl. So sometimes they're into like, you know, the, you know, doll cake dresses or even, you know, Bentley and Lace and other designers will make a little bit more simple dresses that you can purchase and have in your client closet. So the third option with the dresses is your client can actually rent a dress. So let's say your client found a dress on a website and they go and rent it and they say, hey, rented this dress for Aubrey and I want to bring her in and photograph it, that's cool too. If you wanted to do it that way, a lot of designers do actually offer discount car codes that you can then pass out to them that they can use, and then they just show up with the dress. You don't have to mess with it, you just need to make sure you have a backdrop that matches, you don't have to ship it back or anything, photograph them and they leave. So that's your third option.
The third option of the client renting, I would think would maybe work once everyone kind of um, knows about the dress sessions and they're into it and they love it. Those moms that sometimes are a little bit control freaks and want like an exclusive thing, they would be more into that and you can pass that knowledge onto them and you will know which ones that would definitely take the bait on that. Let's talk about backdrops. Let's talk about backdrops. I love backdrops. I love them. I love them, okay? Like you can't have enough backdrops. Like, hello, you can sell them. Like when you get sick of them, you can collect them. I mean, come on, they're beautiful. Look at this. This is seriously one of my current favorites that I have using right now. It's a sweep. It's incredible. I will link it in the video below. It's amazing. It's awesome to have on hand. Okay, so the biggest question I get is where do I start with backdrops? So where do I start with backdrops, purchasing them and using them for these dream dress sessions? So if you do purchase floral backdrops or walls, you probably have some that you could go ahead and use and to see if you like the, uh, to see if you like shooting these sessions or not. But I do have ways of choosing specific backdrops and there are some neutral backdrops that are just amazing to have on hand anyway. And I'm gonna talk about those now. So like I said, I have a system for choosing backdrops um, for dress sessions. So when I see a dress online that I'm going to rent or if I have a dress that I have rented, is this dress more of a warm color or is it more of a cool color? And that's not something that some people even think of, but when I look at a dress, I immediately think, is it warm or cool tones, okay? And as photographers, we kind of have an eye for that. We know what to look for. We know whether an image is cool. We know whether an image is warm. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about right now. So, you see what I mean? There's a distinct difference between a warm backdrop, a cool backdrop, a warm dress and a cool dress, but there are some that are gonna be neutral category. They can work with either one. The backdrop behind me can work with a warm dress or it can work with a cool dress. Does it look a little bit better with cool dresses? Yeah, but we all know how easy it is to warm up an image and post. And actually when I'm, I'll edit and then I'll show you how to do that in the second video. If you're having trouble you know, choosing whether a backdrop is warm or cool or it look, would look good with the dress, grab the stock image of the backdrop on Baby Dream website. Or, then you can grab the stock image of the dress on the dress designer's website and put them together. You will know immediately whether they go together or not, I promise. Like I have even shared that with another photographer and she was like, oh my gosh, that made it so much easier to choose. And I'm like, I know, right? It just takes the guesswork out of it for you to see the two together. So that is the way I choose a backdrop. So I will go warm or cool and then I go from there. Then I'm gonna choose whether I want a high key look or a low key look. And we're gonna talk about that when we talk about lighting. So that will be another kind of determiner when you're choosing the backdrop too. So what if you don't have any backdrops to shoot these kind of sessions? What do I buy? Where do I start? I have a few options for you and they're good ones. The one behind me is amazing. I'm gonna link it below. Here's some images that I've shot with this backdrop. Actually, it's a sweep. So here's these. Other amazing ones are walls, such as this. All of these will be linked below. I've also put the names of the drops in the video, so take note of that. Heirlooms, heirlooms are amazing. They're sort of, they're, they're kind of like a cross between a floral and a scene. So you could use it as a scene for a vintage look, or you could also use it as a floral for a dream dress. They're awesome. They come in tons of different colors. They're beautiful. They look great with families. They look great with uh, pets. I mean, there's so many different genres you can use the heirlooms for. Some more of my favorites for dream dresses are divines. And also any of the newer illusions line. They are incredible, okay? But what's great about those two is not only are they good for dream dress sessions, but you can also use them for seniors, for families, for boys, anything really. Okay, so let's talk about size. Everyone always talks about backdrop size. And I'm here to tell you, if you're going to shoot the bigger dream dresses, 
you're gonna have to go big or go home, okay? So it's gonna have to be an eight by 10 or larger unless you're photographing littles. If you're photographing little kids like age five and under, you're okay. They're not gonna be able to move around as much and you might have some Photoshop work to do if you're shooting with let's say a 50 millimeter or a 35 millimeter, but this, so I'm standing behind a sweep, which is an eight by 14 sweep, I think, or eight by 12, 14, something like that. This, this is a four by six. You can see the difference. It's tiny. This is one of the first baby dream backdrops I ever owned, you guys. And I love it so much that I just ordered it in an eight by 10 and I can't wait to get it in. Bigger the better on backdrops, folks. You will not regret it. Your client can move around. They can spin in the dresses. They don't have to worry about it. The littles can run around. They can move. You don't have to worry about them coming off the backdrop or all the stuff that you're gonna have to do in Photoshop to fix that backdrop. Lighting. Let's talk about lighting, guys. Okay, so I am standing in my studio, in the front of my studio, which is actually natural light. Now. When I moved to the studio, I started shooting natural light just because I had a great room for it. It was beautiful and I loved it, okay? Now, I shot with only studio lights for years and years and years and years. I've been a photographer for 20 years in October, so if that tells you anything. So I didn't shoot natural light in studio until 2016, I think it was when I moved into this studio, I'm pretty sure. So I just prefer natural light because I like the way the dresses look in natural lighting and it has more of, um, let's say, an artistic look to it. I just like the way it looks, okay? Can I shoot strobe? Um, yes, for sure. I can make it look exactly like natural light, actually, which is going to be a tutorial in the future, okay? So keep an eye out for that. But either one, it doesn't matter, you guys. It doesn't matter whether these are shot natural or strobe, I promise. You can mimic you can make them look exactly the same if that's the look that you're going for, okay? But there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're shooting any light source, okay? It doesn't matter if it's natural or strobe, okay? So dresses are gonna have a certain look, all right? So your backdrop's gonna have a certain look. Your backdrop is going to have, you know, a deeper, more low-key look like this, or your dress is going to have a higher key, brighter look like this. So when I talk about lighting, that's more what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a cohesive look with your backdrop, your lighting, your client, and your dress, okay? That all needs to kind of go together, look right together, warms, cools, it all needs to come together and make a perfect image. Let's talk about posing, okay. If you know me, you know I love posing, okay? When I shot, let's see, I shot dream dress, I've been shooting these dream dress sessions since 2019, and about May 2019, I think, and for the first, oh my gosh, I don't even know, months and months and months, I challenged myself to shoot every single session with no props, no chairs, no benches, nothing. Like, keep it simple, right? That's what I like to do, keep it simple. But what that also chooses you to do, I mean, sorry, what that also forces you to do is to get better in your posing, to think on your toes, to get better at flow posing, okay? Because you should be able to shoot a girl with no props. I mean, my gosh, the dress is like incredible. The girls are beautiful. The backdrop's beautiful. You don't need props. What do you need props for, right? Now, will it mix it up every now and then? Yeah, is it easier if maybe they bring in a sibling or mom or whatever? Yeah, it's much easier to pose on props, but I'm just saying you don't need props, okay? Now, I do have a full five poses for every session video. I'm gonna link it below also. Go watch that. I'm gonna go over those poses really quick for you though. So you can kind of watch this, but then if you want more in depth, go watch that video. So first pose that I do every single session, most of the time I start off with this pose, is side to side. So what you're gonna do is not twirling necessarily because you don't want to, you wanna make sure your dress is tied on appropriately first. And so you want to have the girls grab the dress and you want to do knee over knee over knee over knee. And that's your first pose. Loosens them up a little bit. You can pull in a fan. I talk more about it in my video, okay? 
Second pose is sassy shoulder, okay? So at this point, most of the kids I work with, they, they know and I just do it and they'll do it. But if you say, let me see a sassy shoulder, they'll give you a sassy shoulder or they'll look over their shoulder. It's like the cutest thing ever. So that's the second pose. Okay, third pose is the head shot. So I love this up close shot. It is usually a three quarter length or a shoulder head and shoulder shot. Um, I shoot it at the wall sometimes, it's up close. Hair's blowing, beautiful, love it. Looking right in the camera to die for. Fourth pose, crown. I have crowns in studio. I have accessories in studio. Literally mom shows up with her kid, okay? Crowns, I talk more about crowns in the posing video. I will link below. They're very inexpensive. Girls love them, priceless, okay? Crown poses, priceless. You gotta get a crown, okay? At least one. Okay, so final pose is profile. This, love it. I say that about every pose, don't I? But anyway, this is the perfect pose to show off the back of the dress, to show off beautiful profiles, to show off mom's curling capabilities or professional curling capabilities, whatever. But the girls love this shot, looking down. You can shoot it from a bunch of different angles. It's brilliant, I love it. Grandma loves it, everyone loves it. So like I said, I have a standalone video that goes over these five uh, poses for every session. I'm gonna link it below this video. Uh, check it out if you want. I'm going to be coming out with a more comprehensive posing guide. I love posing. So I'm gonna be having a, a bigger posing guide uh, come out in the future and watch for that because I think you'll enjoy it. I hope those tips have helped you. Started to get your gears turning on offering these sessions. They are amazing, they're fun, clients love them. I'm gonna go ahead and do a section of an actual quick dream dress shoot that I videoed behind the scenes for you. And then I'm going to edit a couple of images to kind of give you an idea of how I achieve my look from shooting to editing. So I hope that these videos have helped you and link. I have links below. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. So if you want, check out the last video.